We're going to get started lying down on the floor for a few minutes in any comfortable position. So you're welcome to sit uh, in a supported way if that feels better. Or you can lie down on the ground. You don't have to be flat on the ground and you don't have to land in stillness quite yet. So I invite you to take a minute or so just to do something that feels good to your body. It's just an inner cue that you're starting to listen inward. Instead of so much demand, so much strain, we're coming in from the opposite angle here. Starting to open to the sensations, the desires of the body. So giving yourself something that feels good, whether that's just resting in stillness, giving yourself some space to breathe, or finding some kind of gentle movement or stretching. Starting to let the breath open up. Again, no need to force anything, but just inviting your body to take some fuller breaths. Signaling to your nervous system that this is a safe space to play, to explore, to feel and discover. And take as much time as feels right to you. Continuing to move or stretch as your body requests. And eventually making your way toward some kind of stillness. Something that feels just supported, comfortable. Ideally, without so much externalized sensation so that we can start to turn our awareness within. In a way, that's the point of stillness. We're gonna take a few moments just in silence here. This is like a cushion, a transition point, an arrival from the activity, the movement, the momentum that's carried you here and into this experience. Allowing this to be a set aside, sacred practice for you. So as we invite the body into rest, we open the senses to what is happening, what is unfolding, what is available. Noticing what's here and doing your best to quiet any superfluous thoughts or mental activity. Continuously deepening into a spacious stillness.
As you continue to look within, you may notice that there is an aspect of yourself experiencing this moment. An aspect of yourself that's simply part of this experience. The part of you that feels the ground beneath you. The part of you that hears the sounds around you. The part of you that feels any sensations in the body, maybe pressure, maybe pain, maybe lightness. There's a part of you that is embedded in the direct experience. And perhaps noticing as well that there is another part of you that overlays a narrative onto that direct experience. A part of you that judges whether a sensation is good or bad. Something that you like or dislike. A part of you that might be thinking about something from earlier today, something that's happening later, something that's happening outside of this space. And for the purposes of tonight's class, I'd like for you to just continue to be aware of these two aspects of self and really inviting them into a unification. Recognizing that we're not two people, we're one. So bringing these two dimensions together. The focus of our class tonight is continuing to explore freedom. Freedom through movement, freedom through mind, freedom in every aspect of our lives. And in particular tonight, we'll be exploring the freedom to fail. Failure is often something we avoid at all costs, perhaps even keeping ourselves limited to what feels comfortable, what feels familiar, what feels safe in order to avoid the embarrassment or the identification with failure. But this is simply a mental perspective and one that I find not very helpful for the most part. So tonight we'll work to explore this idea of failure from the perspective of freedom. What is failure? What does it mean to fail? To me, failure is simply not meeting an expectation that's been predetermined. So tonight, as we explore through movement, I'd like to just plant a couple of seeds for you to keep in mind. First, this difference between 
expectation and an aim. To me, an expectation is something that's something that's rigid and something that's distinct and concrete that's defined and anything outside of that is in a sense not right or not good enough. This is often how we feel if we feel like we failed at something. We try a move, we don't land it. It's easy to have some kind of self-criticism or judgment in those circumstances. Again, not a very helpful mind state. So instead of we consider, instead of an expectation, maybe we have an aim. Maybe we're aiming for something. Maybe there is a, a pinnacle, a peak, a, a perfect point. But everything along there is a practice, a process. The thing I like about this idea of an aim is it opens up the experience a little bit more to include a qualitative sense as well as quantitative. So maybe your aim is not just to do something well, but it's to feel a certain way as you do it. Maybe your aim is just to have patience with yourself as you try something new. Maybe that's success. And another thing I'd like to invite you to explore within yourself tonight is the mental narrative that happens as we experience whatever we define as success and failure. What is the direct experience? And what is the mental narrative that's being overlaid on top of that? And while direct experience just is what it is, it's often colored by the tone of our expectations as well as our self-talk. And this aspect is a choice we make. So just noticing, maintaining that inward sens sensitivity to observe where your mind goes when you do something well and when you don't. And what happens if you change that narrative? So as much as possible, as we begin to ease toward movement, knowing that we'll end up right here again on the floor at the end of this class, it's just an invitation to stay as connected inwardly as you can. Closely observing your own process and patterns so that you can learn something about your tendencies, your orientation, and hopefully find a greater sense of freedom by questioning those assumed identifications, assumed expectations, and finding freedom through the process of growth. Just allowing these words, these ideas, to sink into your body, like 
little seeds being planted and then watered. Letting go of any expectation you might have for yourself or for this class tonight. And opening yourself to experiencing something new. Just allowing the breath to deepen once again. And feeling your body on the ground. Without moving, start to feel a sense of aliveness buzzing through you. Like every cell of your body is waking up with potential energy. building this potency before we start to move. So that there's power in wherever you direct your attention. Let's slowly start to allow the possibility of more movement. Maybe by releasing the expectation of stillness. allowing ourselves to move experience the world around us out of that default mode network. Into the present moment, the sensations, the environment.
And let's actually start to set expectations for ourselves. Begin with, we can start with small, easy, simple expectations. I expect that I can push off of my legs and that I can stand up. I expect that I can bend my legs and I can get back to the floor. Easy, simple expectations to start with. Nothing too challenging. Nothing that's even really questionable. But before each task or movement you do, try to set a clear expectation for what you're going to do. start to notice even when these expectations are small and simple and arguably easily achievable even if we've done them hundreds or thousands of times when you really pay attention it's often different than how we would expect Probably, maybe, it's just because our context is different every day, internally, externally, nothing's ever exactly the same. And now I want you to play with the idea, I want you to start setting expectations that you know we won't be able to achieve. But try to genuinely set the expectation. If I'm looking at this bit of the ceiling here, I'm fairly sure I can't jump and, and touch it. If I can set a genuine expectation for myself that I could, and then I really try it, that's what we're working on right now. Simple things.
Try to set them as much as possible as genuine expectations. Expect yourself really to actually be able to do it. And then, give it a genuine effort. Notice just what happens to yourself when we fail to meet these expectations. Really try right now, really try to genuinely expect yourself to do it. Really get yourself into that mental state. You can do it. You can do it. And you're trying it. Your full effort. Maybe occasionally you surprise yourself. We're making genuine efforts in a challenging direction. Maybe it's not just a bad thing. times when this could be useful. It can be hard to have confidence. We don't expect ourselves to be able to do something. But now let's start to allow ourselves, rather than having expectations, to just have an aim. And for me, the difference is 
It starts the same. But an expectation has a judgment after it. And with an aim, we either don't have the judgment after, or it's a very soft judgment. It's just an observation of what happened. It's not a judgment of our character. It's not a judgment of our effort. It's not a judgment of our quality as human beings. We're just trying something. It may happen, it may not happen. Maybe see if we can revisit some of these ideas that we tried as expectations. See if we can revisit them as an aim. See if you can free yourself from the judgment of success and failure. Rather than rewarding yourself if you succeed, see if you can enjoy and embrace the process of trying and effort. And also the experience that you might have otherwise judged this failure. What does it mean to enjoy this process?
another important aspect of this is that expectations can be dismissive of other opportunities. When we have an aim, we're not rejecting other possibilities, other things that might happen. So maybe we're aiming for something. And we notice something else is possible. Something else might be more interesting. And rather than rejecting that possibility, we can embrace it. We can also start to flirt with this space of freedom through not having a specific aim. We could have a more general aim, or maybe we have no... What does it mean to have no aim? What does it mean to embrace the space? Maybe we're not even training. We're not aiming to develop anything. Maybe we're not aiming to learn anything. What does it mean? How does it feel to embrace that freedom? That we don't have to get better. We certainly don't have to get better today. How does that feel? What do we learn or develop when we're not aiming to learn or develop? We're just allowing ourselves to experience
How does it feel to embrace curiosity rather than stubbornness? What freedom do we gain by changing expectation to aim? And what freedom do we gain by changing aims into curiosities? How does it feel? Beautiful.
us one last thing for today, for our movement section. Allow yourself to get curious about something that before you set as an expectation that was too challenging. As you step outside of your comfort zone, start to pay as much attention to the state of your mind as you do to the state of your body. So keep moving just a couple more minutes, pushing that edge. Just another minute or so into the, the very edge of what was an expectation, what was an aim, what might now be an exploration. In fact, maybe try this. Choose one thing, one, one thing to do, one goal. And I'll invite you to do it three times. The first time, do it as an expectation. A distinct, concrete, determined expectation. What does that feel like? The second time, do it as an aim. Acknowledging the process, what feels different. The third time, do it as an open exploration. Moving in the same direction, but it doesn't really matter where you get. What feels different there? The last bit of movement here. When you finish those three experiments, let your movement soften. Stay in that exploratory space. And starting to down-regulate, down-shift. Often this type of exploration can really get us into some discomfort, both physically and mentally. And there's a purpose behind this. We push ourselves to the edge in a contained environment so that we build a physical and mental skill set that will serve us well in all aspects of life. When we're confronted with this idea of challenge, success, and failure in the rest of our lives. But as we start to tone it down now, give your body a sense of pleasure. Something that feels safe. That feels good. 
Something that feels totally accessible. Finding your way well back into the comfort zone. In fact, I'll invite you really not to challenge yourself at all here. You can be resting, you can be moving, you're free to do what feels good to you. Continuing to sink into a greater sense of ease and comfort. Recognizing that this is a gift you can give to yourself. There's so much in life that we don't have control over. But what we do have control over is how we orient within and around what happens to us. How we perceive the events in our lives and how we respond to them. And starting to make your way into a final resting place for the last few minutes. Something comfortable. Something supportive. And just reflecting back on the last hour, where did you feel most constrained, most limited? Where did you feel the greatest sense of struggle with yourself? What were the conditions that led to that? And what was your mental response in the face of those conditions? And where in the last hour did you feel the greatest sense of ease, the greatest sense of openness, playfulness, and freedom. What were the conditions that led to this feeling? And what was your mental response in the face of those conditions? And just noticing how you feel right now. Truly. 
Do you feel frustrated, tired, playful, curious? Recognizing that however you feel is your body and mind response to the conditions that have been handed to you. Noticing that you can play even here in stillness. Whatever frustration or discomfort you're feeling, you can tone that up. Or you can tone that down. You could also choose to simply be open not judging what's right and wrong, good and bad. Leaving space for the entirety of this experience to just be what it is. Allowing yourself to settle. Now, there's no more goal or expectation. No more aim. Perhaps even letting go of any effort toward curiosity. Let go of all doing whatsoever. Just be. Feeling the breath roll in, roll out. Not progressing toward anything, just sustaining. Recognizing that when there is no expectation, there is no failure.
when there is no expectation. You are completely free. Moving toward the completion of class tonight. So perhaps bringing some gentle movement back into your body, taking your time, maybe starting with the breath. And for those of you here in this space, we're going to just make our way into a closing circle without any expectation of how you might get there. Let your body take you there in any way that works, any way that feels good to you. Just taking a moment to close your eyes and let any of the lessons that you experience tonight sink in and absorb. Giving you some rich, fertile soil to draw upon. The next time you feel challenged by something that feels outside of your comfort zone, something that feels difficult, perhaps there's a way to find freedom. If you're watching later, thanks for joining us. Those of you here, I'd love to hear anything you want to share about your experience, what you noticed, what your responses, reactions were, what felt good, what didn't. The concept of, of failure was uh, interesting to work with in this space. and with this practice, because normally it's so free flow and uh, whatever feels good in the moment, that's what you should be doing. Um, so rarely do I push myself past like 85%. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of like a tendency mm -hmm. that I have mm -hmm. to prevent injury and uh, yeah, it just, yeah, makes things more graceful feeling. Um, but it felt really good to have that mindset of Let's see what happens when I push a little bit further towards something that I don't think I can do and found myself performing better than I anticipated. I find freedom, a good bit of freedom, in, in relinquishing um, the expectation of freedom. Of freedom? Relinquishing the expectation of freedom does, does bring me quite a bit of peace. Mm. Um, and the failures lead to disappointments. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes that feels like a good expectation to rely on. For me, it was hard to like set a genuine expectation and like at least a genuine physical expectation and be like frustrated by it. Like as much as I was trying to get myself in the space like, oh I can reach that. And then like, ah, you know, jump for it. 
you know, reach for it, I couldn't quite reach it, I was like, oh, that wasn't bad. <laughs> um, so I think for me personally, I think my growth has just more, feels more on the lines of like fear, rather than expectations and like having this failure and frustration. Um, it's more like, sort of along the lines of what you were saying, of like, one of those like things that I'm afraid of, like I set that kind of limiter, probably also right around that 85%, you know? Um, and that has a lot of benefits, you know, it keeps you safe and like, it keeps you going and that, that's like a long-term, I think generally very good strategy. Um, but, you know, personally for me, that's also led to like some, certainly some weaknesses as far as like acrobatics and, and whatnot and other things that, um, yeah, that I'm starting to like try to focus and approach more. Like sometimes it was actually helpful to set an expectation that I could do something, you know, yeah. even like something, okay, like I know this thing historically has been too hard and then to try and put myself in the state like, okay, I can do this thing. Mm. Still kind of expecting to fail, but like trying to like pretend that I'm not. Pretend, you know, it's almost like a pretend confidence. Um, but then sometimes I did it, you know, so it was like, oh, that was interesting. And then sometimes something else happened, you know, or, or this thing that like I was doing all the time, like, actually it's a little different than I thought it was, or at least it's different today. I was excited to get to explore this topic tonight because it's something I've been noticing in my own practice and training, I've started to identify this feeling for me of frustration that comes up when I'm like consistently unable to do something well. Um, like that's not a space I particularly like to be in. And at first I would just be totally caught up in that feeling, like basically aversion. Like I don't want to be here. I don't want to be doing this. It's not working. Like I can't do it. And it would just like, frustration would kind of build with that and it was it became a limiting factor right I mean I, w I could work through it but the resolution was only in like a, when I would do something enough times that I started to do it a little bit better and then the feeling of frustration would go away completely and instead I was like happy and proud and excited and this can happen within like a single class Right? So I started to notice this pattern that it's just, I don't like to not be able to do something well. And I really like to be able to do it well. And to notice like how fickle, it's such a strong emotion for me that can be like limiting or inspiring. Um, but it's so much just based on like the conditions. And so once I started to notice that and like how quickly it would change once I started to do something better, um, it helped me to put even the difficult part of that experience in context and sort of not take it so seriously, um, which lessened my actual feeling of frustration because I can see now like it's just a result, like um, I'm not able to do this very well, that's frustrating to me and that's okay. And something about that being okay actually like, I don't know, maybe lessens my resistance or something or helps me to like see it differently and uh, also puts into context the like ego or pride or whatever it is that comes up, the, the satisfaction when I can do something well, which is totally worth celebrating, but um, there's two sides of the same coin, right? Like one comes with the other. And so it's been an interesting thing to, that I've been exploring in my own training and practice and uh, Finding it really beneficial because there's so much, even though we're training the body, there's like so much that's happening. So much um, corresponding training that's, or opportunity for training that's happening with the mind too. So yeah, it's something that's felt really, very relevant to me lately in this particular realm. I'm happy we got to explore it tonight. And then I think the next stage is like, for me at least, seeing, noticing where do I feel this in the rest of my life? Where am I setting um, 
expectations for myself that aren't necessary or helpful or where should I be that maybe could help me to like overcome some obstacle like you were talking about, Bren, or provide some sense of inspiration and where can there be some more openness that helps to just let every part of the process be, be what it is and be enjoyable.